Hey everybody, this is Flight Instructor Brad Russell, and today I'm going to be showing you the ins and outs of using the radios in the Piper Warrior 3. I'm going to start off with some basics for you new pilots, then progress to some more advanced features, and finally talk about some equipment failures and how to troubleshoot them. So if you'd like to skip ahead to anything else in the video, click on the links on the screen now. So to get started, turn the radios on with the Radio Master Switch, or Avionics Master Switch as it's written in your checklist, and you'll notice the Garmin gives you a welcome screen, then eventually gets you to this page, or the date page. Now rather than clicking through this screen, it's a good idea to go ahead and take a look at the date at the bottom, and just double check that the aviation database within the Garmin unit is within date. Click enter and you'll notice it gets you to an instrument panel self-test, and I'll be talking more about this page in a later video in which I talk about the GPS functionality. But again, it's a good idea to just look at what it does. Now you'll notice if you look at Nav1, it deflects the CDI needles both half up and half left, so we know that's working. And click enter and the GPS will begin acquiring satellites. Now while it's doing that, let's take a minute to go ahead and program in the frequencies we're going to be using during the first phases of flight. Now on our aircraft we have two comms and two navs. COM1 and NAV1 are both located in the GPS, whereas COM2 and NAV2 are located in a stack just beneath it, and they're totally separate. Now let's take a closer look at COM1. You'll notice we have two frequencies displayed. The frequency on top is our active frequency, or the one we can transmit and receive on, and the frequency just beneath that is our standby frequency. Now to change that standby frequency, we're actually going to use the knob on the bottom left corner of the GPS. And you'll notice whenever I turn the bigger knob or outer knob, it changes the whole numbers or megahertz. And if I turn the smaller number, it changes the decimals or kilohertz. I'm going to go ahead and program in ground 1 to 1 1.6. Now when I'm ready to switch over to ground, all I do is press this COM flip-flop button, and now what I just programmed to standby is now my active frequency. And you can stay a little proactive or stay ahead of the plane by programming in the next frequency you think you're going to use. And in most cases, it's going to be West Timer Tower 118.0. Now when the time comes to contact tower, all I have to do is hit that COM flip-flop button. And COM2 works in pretty much the same way, only it has its own knob to change frequencies and its own COM flip-flop button. Now a quick tip I want to show you on this COM2 is whenever it comes to changing to frequencies that end in 0 .025 increments. And I'll explain this more in detail. Let's take a look at the Chigashe AWAS frequency. The frequency is 118.175. You'll notice on COM2, whenever I change to that 0.175, it won't actually do it. It just goes from 0.15 to 0.2, or 0 0.05 increments. Now to change to that 0.175, pull out on the small knob. Now you'll notice I can get to 0.17. Don't worry if the 5 doesn't show up on 0.175, we'll still be able to receive their AWOS with just 118.17 showing. Now kind of a neat feature on COM1 is that flip-flop button, if you actually press and hold it, it'll switch over to the emergency frequency 121.5, and that can definitely be useful if you're ever in an emergency situation and need to save a little bit of time. Now since we have two comms, we need to be able to select which comms we're using at any given time. We do that using the audio panel at the top. You'll notice we have two rows of buttons. Our top row of buttons are our audio selector buttons, or which comms we're going to receive or hear on. And our bottom row of buttons are our comm mic buttons, or which comms we're going to transmit on whenever I key the mic button on the yoke. So if I want to select COM1, all I do is press the COM1 mic button. You'll notice now I have both lights lit up for COM1, so I can hear or receive on COM1, Plus, I can transmit on COM1 anytime I key this mic button on the yoke here. And if I want to switch over to COM2, just hit the COM2 mic button. Now I can both transmit and receive on COM2. That's important to note that you're only going to transmit on whichever COM you have selected with that COM mic button, and you only transmit whenever you press and hold that mic button that's located on your yoke. Any other time when you're talking, only yourself and your instructor are going to be able to hear what you're saying. However, there are certain situations where it's useful to listen or receive over both comms at the same time. And I simply do that by pressing the audio selector button at the top for the other comm I wish to listen to. Now again, this is only useful in certain situations. However, most of the time we don't want to receive over both comms, but we might accidentally do so whenever we change from one comm to the other. When you change to another comm, ensure that it's the only one selected on your audio panel. Otherwise, you might be receiving over both comms, and that can get kind of confusing just like this. Crimson 3, number 2, following Cherokee, turning left base, runway 35, Confusing, right? So let's deselect that previous comm. Now I'm only going to receive over the comm I just changed to, which is all I want anyways. Now let's talk about adjusting the volume on the comms. Now before you start messing with anything, double check your headset, as most have a volume adjustment knob on the outside, and a lot of times that'll actually help out a lot. If not, we can change the volume of comm 1 using this small knob with the C on it. If I turn it counterclockwise, it turns the volume down. Clockwise, it'll turn it up. 
Now, if you're not actually receiving anything over that column while you're trying to make your adjustments, it's kind of hard to tell what you're doing. So an easy way to make your adjustment is by pressing in on this button. That overrides the automatic squelch and gives you this static sound. You can make your adjustments from here till it's at a comfortable volume, then press in on the button to do away with that static sound. That way when somebody calls you, you're not going to be blasting out your eardrums or straining to hear them uh, before you make your adjustment on the comms. Come to again works in a fairly similar way, only it has its own volume knob here. And to get the squelch sound, you pull out on this knob. And then once you're done with your adjustment, push in on it to do away with that static sound. Now again, these only adjust the volume of what we're receiving or hearing over either COM1 or COM2, whichever COM we adjusted. Now you might find yourself in a situation when you're straining to either hear your own voice or your instructor's voice, or what we call intercoms. To adjust your intercoms, go to your audio panel and use the small knob on the left side. Works in the same way, only you can just talk into the mic when you make your adjustments here. Now another situation you might find yourself in is the mic isn't quite picking you up when you begin talking, and you find yourself almost having to shout to get the mic to register what you're saying. So to adjust the microphone sensitivity, go up to the audio panel, and this time we're going to use the large knob or the outside knob. Counterclockwise makes the mic more sensitive, and clockwise actually makes the mic less sensitive. Now adjusting the mic to where it's too sensitive will definitely ensure that it picks up your voice when you start talking, but it'll also pick up the background noise of the airplane, and on long flights that can definitely get fatiguing. So it's best to adjust the sensitivity of the mic so that way it picks up your voice at a comfortable speaking volume, but not so sensitive it picks up the background sound of the engine. To do so, turn the large knob left until it just begins to pick up the background sound of the engine. Now without saying anything, slowly turn that knob back towards the right until it just clips out the background sound of the engine. Now you can test the mic by speaking into it, and it should pick you up at a comfortable volume now. Another neat feature on this audio panel is the COM12 button. By pressing this button, it isolates the comms. COM1 to the left side pilot, and COM2 will be isolated to the right side pilot. Each pilot can use these comms at the exact same time without interfering with each other, and they'll only hear what's coming through their comm. Yet, when you're not actually talking on the comms, you can still converse or talk to each other through the intercom. Now, what I've shown you so far will definitely make operating the radios a lot easier during normal operations. However, part of being a good pilot is knowing what to do in situations don't follow the norm, or in this case, equipment failures. Now if you ever find yourself going Nordo, or an aircraft with no radios, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up the aircraft booklet that we check out for each flight. Open up to your checklist the red page, which is the emergency checklist, and you'll notice we actually have a radio failure checklist on here. Now if you remember nothing else in this video on how to deal with radio failures, just remember you have a checklist that you can refer to. Now one of the first things on this checklist is to check your headphone jacks. You never know during the flight they might have rattled loose, so definitely check those. The next thing you'll want to check is your circuit breaker panel. Definitely make sure that one of the radio circuit breakers hasn't popped out. Now the next one might seem kind of obvious, but definitely check your frequency. Being off by just one decimal place will make it to where it won't even work for you. Also another thing you want to check is make sure the frequency you're trying to use is the one set into the active position. Now another obvious one is the audio panel. Make sure the comm that you're trying to use is the one you have selected. Now if your checklist doesn't actually help you out, there are some other things we can check, especially if you can't hear anything. One of those being the volume knob on the outside of your headset. Or you can actually check the volume on the comm itself by using the volume knob. You never know, especially during a turbulent flight, you may have brushed that knob and accidentally turned it down. Now if none of that's working, the easiest solution is to switch over to the other comm that you weren't using. A lot of times, comm problems will be isolated to one comm, because again, they're completely separate units. However, if even that isn't working, let's double check a few more things. First off, let's double check that when we key the mic, we're actually transmitting. If you look next to your active frequency, you'll see this TX on COM1. And if you look at the audio panel, you'll also notice when you key the mic, the COM1 mic button will flash. If you're actually transmitting, you know you don't have a transmitter problem. So let's double check that we don't have a receiver problem. A simple thing you can do is if you're within range of the AWOS, go ahead and tune in 119.55, and you'll notice when the AWOS transmit or when you receive over it, you'll see this RX next to your frequency. COM2 will show you the same indications. You'll see a little T next to your active frequency on the left, and an R anytime that you're receiving. Stability, one, zero, clear, below, one. Let's say we check all that, and it shows that we are transmitting and we are receiving. However, we still can't hear anything through our headset. In this case, the problem could actually lie within your headset itself. So to bypass your headset speakers, press the speaker button on the audio panel. 
By pressing this button, everything you receive through your comms is going to come through the overhead speaker in the plane. Three miles westbound, converging with you. Altitude indicates... Four so now what you can do is transmit by using your headset microphone, but whenever they call you back, you can actually listen over this overhead speaker. Now let's back up a few steps. Let's say when we're keying that mic, we are not showing that we're transmitting, or we don't see that TX next to our active frequency. This could be a microphone problem, a transmitter problem, or even a yoke mic button problem. Or let's take a look at this audio panel. Again, during turbulent flights, when you're trying to change comms, your hand might be bouncing around and you could have accidentally pressed this PA button. Now with the PA button selected, when you key that mic rather than transmitting, your voice is only going to be broadcast over the overhead speaker within the airplane. So double check that this button is not selected. Now if we think it might be a microphone issue, every plane has a handheld mic located in the seat back pocket. So grab the handheld mic and plug that into the microphone jack on your panel. You can keep your headset plugged in so that way when you transmit by pressing the button on the handheld mic, you can still receive or hear everything coming through your headset if your headset speakers are working properly. Now if even that isn't working, you can actually unplug your headset altogether and plug it in on the right side of the panel. Now when you do this, when you key the mic, you're actually going to have to key the microphone on the right side yoke to see if it works. And it's definitely worth a try. Now let's say none of this is working. Well, we can try resetting the comms by turning them off and turning them back on again. We do that just by using their volume knobs. Turn the volume knob all the way counterclockwise until it clicks. You'll notice on the Garmin it gives you a warning, then turns off. After it turns off, let it set for a couple seconds, and then try turning it back on and see if that helped anything. And COM2 works in just the same way, however you have to turn it off with its own volume knob. Then try turning it back on and again see if that helped anything. Now one more thing you could try resetting is that audio selector panel at the top. We turn that off using the intercom volume knob, or the small knob located on the left side of the unit, all the way past its detent. Now kind of a neat fail-safe feature with this audio panel is that anytime there's a power interruption or a malfunction of any kind within the panel, it directly connects the left side pilot's headset to COM1. So before you turn the unit back on, it's worth trying to transmit and see if you have any luck with it before you actually turn the unit back on. Now finally at this point, we've pretty much exhausted every option we have, and there's really only one thing left to do. That's Squawk 7600 and follow your lost comp procedures. Go ahead and set your radios back up how you normally use them and continue transmitting and giving position reports all along the way. Now would be a good time to review your light gun signals and how to enter the pattern properly without radios with your instructor. Now if you're not comfortable with that, there's definitely nothing wrong with going down to an uncontrolled airport like David J. Perry or Purcell. Once you're on the ground safely, call your instructor or call the OU Mobile and we can help you out from there. Well everybody, hopefully this video will make operating the radios a lot easier from now on. Look forward to more training videos coming from us, and if you have an idea of a video that you'd like to see, feel free to drop us a comment in one of the Hazard ID boxes. This is Brad Russell saying fly, control, and manage like a champion today.